Welcome to our The World Brief program. Today, we have three captivating stories lined up for you. First, the UK has summoned China's ambassador to condemn alleged Chinese espionage activities, following the arrest of three individuals, including a former Hong Kong traffic cop. This incident has raised concerns about Hong Kong's dwindling autonomy and its foreign trade office's independence. Next, Matt Pottinger, a former deputy national security advisor, has called for clearer US defense strategies regarding Taiwan. He suggests that a firm stance could deter China and maintain regional stability, especially with predictions of a potential invasion by 2027. Lastly, President Biden has significantly increased tariffs on Chinese goods, particularly electric vehicles, in a bid to curb China's technological dominance. This move, however, may have broader implications for U.S. consumers and the electric vehicle market. Please stay tuned for more details. Yahoo U.S. In recent weeks, the U.K. has intensified its counterespionage efforts, leading to the arrest of several individuals accused of spying for China. Among those arrested was a former Hong Kong traffic cop working at the city's Economic and Trade Office in London, suggesting a significant erosion of Hong Kong's autonomy under the one government, two systems model. The UK's Foreign Office has condemned China's actions, including cyber attacks and espionage, warning that these behaviors could further strain Sino British relations. Beijing has denied the accusations, but the arrests have raised concerns about the independence of Hong Kong's foreign trade offices which have traditionally operated with a degree of autonomy from Beijing. From Nikkei Asia, Matt Pottinger, a former deputy national security advisor under Trump and a known China hawk, argues that if Trump is re-elected, he should unequivocally state that the U.S. will defend Taiwan against any Chinese aggression. Pottinger believes that such a stance would strengthen deterrence and help maintain stability in the region. He criticizes the Biden administration for sending mixed signals to Beijing, especially after the spy balloon incident earlier this year which he claims Beijing interpreted as a sign of weakness. Pottinger also warns that the U.S. should aim to win the competition with China rather than merely manage it, drawing parallels to the ineffective détente policy of the 1970s with the Soviet Union. Reuters breaking views, Biden's administration has quadrupled tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles and imposed new tariffs on steel and batteries, aiming to counter China's dominance in these sectors. This move follows an investigation initiated under Trump, which accused China of forcing technology transfers and flooding the global market. Despite these efforts, the U.S. struggles to compete with China's technological advancements and market control, particularly in battery production. Domestic efforts to boost electric vehicle production have faltered, with companies like Ford and GM trimming their targets. The reliance on Tesla, whose growth is slowing, further complicates Biden's strategy. The administration faces internal conflicts and external pressures, making it challenging to navigate the complex trade relationship with China. Economist, just over six years ago, when Donald Trump first announced tariffs on Chinese goods, it was as if a bomb had gone off. American stocks fell sharply at the prospect of a trade war, businesses warned of blowback, and economists lined up to decry the move. Such is the protectionist mood in Washington now that Joe Biden's announcement of new measures has been met with rather less panic even though it concerns significantly higher tariffs. On May 14, following a policy review, the White House decided to raise tariffs on, among other things, Chinese semiconductors and solar cells from 25% to 50%, syringes and needles from 0% to 50%, and lithium-ion batteries from 7.5% to 25%. It hit electric vehicles with the biggest increase of all, quadrupling the tariff rate on China-made electric vehicles, EVs, from 25% to 100%. Lael Brainerd of the National Economic Council said the actions would create a level playing field in industries that are vital to our future. Yet, it is American consumers who will pay the price. New York Times, Alice Munro, the revered Canadian author who started writing short stories because she did not think she had the time or the talent to master novels, then stubbornly dedicated her long career to churning out psychologically dense stories that dazzled the literary world and earned her the Nobel Prize in Literature died on Monday night at her home in Ontario. She was 92. Her family announced the death, at a care home, to the Canadian newspaper The Globe and Mail. A representative of her publisher, Penguin Random House Canada, said Ms. Monroe died in Port Hope, on Lake Ontario, east of Toronto, the Associated Press said. Ms. Monroe was one of the rare breed of writer, like Catherine and Porter and Raymond Carver, who made their reputations in the notoriously difficult literary arena of the short story, and did so with great success. Her tales, many of them focused on women at different stages of their lives coping with complex desires, were so eagerly received and gratefully read that she attracted a whole new generation of readers.
Ms. Monroe's stories were widely considered to be without equal, a mixture of ordinary people and extraordinary themes. She portrayed small-town folks, often in rural southwestern Ontario, facing situations that made the fantastic seem an everyday occurrence. Some of her characters were fleshed out so completely through generations and across continents that readers reached a level of intimacy with them that usually comes only with a full-length novel. She achieved such compactness through exquisite craftsmanship and a degree of precision that did not waste words. Other writers declared some of her stories to be near-perfect, a heavy burden for a writer of modest personal character who had struggled to overcome a lack of self-confidence at the beginning of her career when she left the protective embrace of her quiet hometown and ventured into the competitive literary scene. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.